Thank you, Janet, and uh, good afternoon or morning to all of you, and welcome to our session on how maps are being used to prevent and respond to gender-based violence. Um, just to remind ourselves and to inform those that were not there, this session um, was initiated uh, due to the fact that we had a session on International Women's Day, where we were discussing different technologies that are helping to prevent and respond to gender-based violence in Tanzania, but also in Finland and other areas. And frankly, we ran out of time during group discussion and everyone was really, really interested to hear more about the mapping work. And then we decided that we would get together again on the 14th to focus uh, solely on, on the work of open source maps and gender-based violence. So that's the, that's the background why we are here. Um, I won't take up uh, too much of uh, your time because we have two hours and we have five very interesting presentations. But to shortly, just to introduce um, Anna Kulaya, uh, who will be opening our session. She is the National Coordinator of Women in Law and Development in Africa in Tanzania. And she has been working on ending gender-based violence uh, for 20 years. And she's really uh, our rock and, and, and our uh, champion here uh, in Tanzania, but also regionally. Notably, her organization coordinates the Mkuki Coalition, which is made up of 70 organizations in Tanzania. And all of those 70 organizations are working to end gender-based violence, and um, they have had a huge impact uh, working with police to start the gender and children's desk systems uh, 12 or so years ago, and, uh, and notably every year also designing and running the 16 days of activism to end violence against women. Um, Anna, thank you. I know that you're a very um, busy person, um, and uh, thank you so much for agree agreeing to greet us and to open our session. Um, so over to you. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, thank you, Janet Chapman, uh, for giving me this opportunity. It's really an honor for me to be here with you all and share my own experience on GBV advocacy work here in Tanzania. Yeah, as Anna has mentioned, my name is Anna Kulaya. I'm the national coordinator of WILDAF, uh, which is a women's rights organization. Uh, strategically, we are linking law and development to improve the lives of women and girls here in Tanzania. And today, um, as for my opening remarks, I would like to appreciate and um, convey my sincere gratitude to FEM and the UNFPA for giving me this opportunity. Uh, as this platform provides a learning, learning session for all of us. I, I, I know that I'm the one who is also learning here uh, these new innovative approaches to end violence against women and GBV in our country. So I believe this is a learning session um, for all of us. And probably we all know that uh, digital platforms is a way now, is, 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 is a new way, is a new uh, innovatives that really is inevitable. I also understand as Anna has mentioned that this uh, is a continuation of the previous deliberations from the International Women's Day, which happened uh, this year on March. So all I can say, uh, this session and the training is timely uh, because of the current uh, environment situation here. And I would like to highlight two important things which make uh, this uh, session very relevant. One of which is the outbreak of COVID-19. Uh, the COVID-19 necessitated, uh, I think, all of us um, to look into new approaches uh, and new strategies on how we can also address issues of gender-based violence and violence against women. And I can say that uh, also COVID-19 has made us as human beings to understand that we need to increase and strengthen our human relationships. And I would like to share what happened last year during the COVID-19 after the announcement in 17th March uh, 2020, uh, when the country announced that even in Tanzania we have a corona. So we know most of us, we are working uh, from home. Uh, for Tanzania, it was not full lockdown, it was a partial, but even the, the partial lockdown, uh, for those who are coming from Tanzania, you remember, 
that the schools were closed. So, and because of the schools were closed, there were a lot of uh, violence, especially uh, against children, which happened, even the GBV at, uh, on the same time. But most of the NGOs, including even WILDAF, we were working from home. And it was very difficult even to reach um, the victims or the survivors of GBV. I remember we were receiving from our hotline, we were receiving a lot of uh, phone because uh, we also have mobile phones and it was difficult. How can we go and you know assist uh, the GBV survivors in this uh, during the COVID because it was really tough time. And I remember sometimes uh, even some of our, of our staff, they have to go uh, to areas where there is uh, the report of cases of GBV, uh, much as they have to protect themselves, but they also have to go and report uh, these cases to police. And all I, I would like to share that uh, during the COVID-19, uh, even for the police force, it was also a new thing. So everyone was scared with the situation and everyone was also worried, how can we also um, go and address and assist uh, our people while we know there is uh, this pandemic which is taking place in our communities. And because of that, as GBV Quick Coalition, we decided to convene ourselves uh, and we were using the digital platforms, sharing our what is happening in our communities. And in the month between March and April, uh, among only 17 organizations, we were able to collect more than uh, 1,000 cases of GBV. And we saw that this is an uh, alarming situation even in the country. We know that we also heard about uh, FGM, which is about to happening in areas like Mara, but also even here in Dar es Salaam, in areas like Kipunguni, where, where uh, we know uh, the, the tribes like Kuria. So we had to make sure that we made a position statement and we submitted to the government to urge them that they should not only focus on the part of health, but also looking at the GBV because we saw the alarming and the increasing rate of GBV during the, that period where, especially when uh, the children were at home. So, uh, but for that time, we had our learning also as a coalition that we need also to diversify our approaches. We need also to use new approaches. And it was the time that some of us started using the digital platforms, but most of us, we were also are new to this kind of um, approaches. So I think most of us, even today, it is a good opportunity of learning and know how we can use uh, the technology to reach out um, the GBV survivors, but how also the GBV survivors um, can also use uh, this, the digital platforms, the technologies to report cases of GBV and make sure that they connect these cases with the health providers, with the police, with the social welfare. So uh, the COVID-19, uh, it also gives us an opportunity to diversify our approaches and think that we have also to use other methodologies on how we can address cases of GBV. Another thing which is quite important uh, for this kind of technology in our country now uh, is the situation, is the new regime that we have. We all know that we have a new president, uh, our our lady, our first uh, Mama Samia Sulu Ali, uh, who is uh, also, I can say, who is also uh, coming from the civil society organizations. Uh, to a very short evaluation, you can say that she is a good listener. Uh, she understands the communities. She knows what is happening in the communities. So I believe that having this kind of different approaches using the technology also, it is an opportunity for us also to share the information with the new regime, also to, uh, to reach her and also the government and see how effectively we can address uh, GBV, but also to make sure that women and girls are safe and are working in the environment which is safe. Because as you know, in all, if you, if you look at all the ecological model from, that, from the family level uh, at the street, uh, to the institutions, uh, women, they do experience uh, a lot of violence. But again, uh, we know that there is also 
uh, the need for this kind of technology to be integrated into our systems. We all know that uh, for the country like Tanzania, we have a number of programs that are also taking place. Now, it is quite important that using this kind of new methodologies, uh, new technologies, and how are we going to make sure that we integrate to the programs that are existing in place? How are we going to use the open source crowd mapping? Uh, how are they going to work with the violence against women committees, which we have in our communities? And we have to take in, uh, in, in our mind that we have, as a Tanzania, we have a national plan of action to end violence against women, which is about to end this year or next year, if, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So how are we going to make sure that uh, the interventions that we are going to have, these new approaches, we make sure that when we are reviewing the national plan of, for action to end violence against women are also taken on board. These new approaches, these uh, uh, technology approaches, they're also part of the plan of our national action to end violence against women to make sure that because we have a lot of programs, we have a lot of plans, but sometimes the means of how we are going to reach, how are we going to address, how are we going to, show, to ensure that our survivors, especially women and children, they do access uh, these services is, is, is still a big challenge here in Tanzania. So I believe uh, uh, the platform today will provide that insight of how are we going to use uh, the technology um, the open source uh, crowd, the mapping, and other devices that we have uh, to ensure that women, children, and GBV survivors, they do access, they can report their cases, but also the service providers, they can immediately respond uh, to this report when the information is shared. I'm lucky also, and I'm, I'm happy that one of our champion, local champion, Janet Mawinza, is going to share also their work. Uh, Janet Mawinza is, is an executive director of Wajiki, which is also um, a member of GBV Mpuki Coalition. And they have been, uh, for quite a long time now, they've been working with the local communities to, um, to end special extortion and all issues around GBV. They are knocking door to door. They are going street to street. They are going to bus, uh, bus stands. They have a project which is called Safari Salama, which I'm, I'm sure today we are going to hear from her. But all I'm, I'm, I want to say here is, uh, I think also this platform gives us a, an opportunity to connect and see how we can use the local activism which is here to ensure that they are also applying and using So sorry, um, Anna, I think you're muted. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I was saying that we have a lot of uh, programs here in Tanzania to end violence against women and children. Now, um, while these um, important questions remains, how far they have reached GBV survivors or how far they connect the survivors with the service providers. So it is important to invest in these new digital innovations, it is important to connect with GBV survivors and service providers in order to supplement the initiatives that are also ongoing in the country. I wish you all fruitful discussion and good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, I know that you have to leave. Um, so if anybody has any quick questions for you, perhaps they can put them in the chat now, but in the interest of time, we'll move on. So um, I'm going to share my screen. Um, can everybody, Anna, can you let me know? Can you see my screen? Or Jeffrey. Okay. 
Can, um, can, can everybody see that? Great, okay, so um, my name's Janet Chapman, as I said, from Tanzania Development Trust and um, Crowd to Map, and we've been working with Hope for Girls and Women um, and many other um, organizations in Tanzania. And this is just going to be a quick overview of what we do. So as one of the organizations we've been working with very closely is Hope for Girls and Women. Um, and Roby Samweli will talk a little bit about this shortly. Um, so Roby is an F um, FGM activist and survivor who's working particularly in Mara region with local activists doing outreach work and running safe houses for girls refusing FGM. But one of the um, issues was that safe house staff and the police couldn't find girls at risk and girls and their parents couldn't find the safe houses because much of rural Tanzania looks like the map at the top. Um, in this area, there could be tens of thousands of people living, but they're not represented on either uh, OpenStreetMap, which is what we're using, or Google Maps. So places like Dar es Salaam, there's been a huge amount of mapping um, with some of our colleagues, particularly around protecting Dar from flooding. But in rural Tanzania, the situation is still looks like the map at the top. So activists and many other people in rural Tanzania need maps. <clears throat> and with Proud to Map, um, we have been making them. So I'm really glad that there are many people on the call today that have been helping in this process. We have now over 16,000 online volunteers from all around the world, as you can see um, on this map. Um, and producing maps um, in the street map, which is a um, open source map owned by the community, open data. And how this works is that um, <clears throat> online volunteers look at satellite images and they can trace roads and buildings from them. So you can see here that you can see that we have um, a road that we've drawn in and there are some buildings here that are being added to the map so that anybody can then see, see that, that, that people live here. And then more importantly even is we're training people on the ground, so people like Roby and her team, to add their local knowledge to in, into the map. So to say, okay, here is the church, here is um, a particular shop, here is the water point, etc. And they're doing this using a free app called maps.me on their smartphone. And here you can see some people adding to that. So, and then we're also training people um, like FGM activists, like Roby, but also the police. Um, so we're working very closely with um, police there. And I'm, I'm hoping Sijali will be joining the call um, shortly. She was due to be here, but she's been called to court. So training the police so that they can use those maps on their phones to quickly get to the places where they need to. Um, and here is a quote from Sijali. So she's using that this, these maps to quickly reach victims of FGM or um, GBV. So with, um, you, with USAID, um, a project called Women Connect, which uh, Jeffrey was also very much involved with, and you'll hear from him shortly, um, this allowed us to set up um, digital champions in every village in Serengeti, all 87 of them. So these were women who had never used a smartphone before. So we were able to provide a cheap smartphone, train people how to use it, uh, train them to map their villages, um, and also how to report gender-based violence using a free app called Open Data Kit. Um, and so here you can see one of the training sessions. And here you can see people seeing a map of their village for the first time. Th thanks to Jeffrey for printing this. And they're adding some of the information that is still needing to be added to the map. 
So as I said, um, we trained people to do this and also using maps.me, you can search for the closest police station and then direct, you can be directed um, to it. Obviously this would only work if all of those police stations have already been added into OpenStreetMap. So digital champions were selected by the village. Um, so each village had a women and children's protection committee in many cases, um, so these committees exist across Tanzania, but in many cases they have never actually met or never been trained. So this project allowed training for the whole um, committee about what um, gender-based violence was. And then um, that the committee chose one woman to become the digital champion. So, and then they had training um, in-face training, but also um, ongoing training from Roby at Hope and her team. So they were trained to use um, an app called Open Data Kit, ODK. So we set up um, forms, so form, forms to report gender-based violence. And uh, this was done in, in Kiswahili. And the, the, they can um, fill in a form and then send it to social welfare and the police gender desk who then dealt with that um, incident. So Kobo Toolbox and Open Data Kit is a free um, software and free app that is incredibly useful. So um, Roby and her team are now using this a lot for many different um, ways of collecting data. So, for example, when girls come to the safe houses, leave the safe houses, have follow ups and so on. And it allows you to um, very simply get um, to visualize the data that you're collecting, either in graphs um, or in a map if you're collecting um, GPS data. And it also allows you to download the, all of the data into um, an Excel sheet. So it's an ex extremely useful way of collecting data. So as I said, the digital champions um, had training um, in person as at the beginning of this project in 2019. Um, and then we were able to organize some additional training sessions when budgets allowed, but they were also joined into a WhatsApp group and had ongoing training that way. Um, and these are some other ways that we were able to visualize the data. So um, that's a quick overview of the project. Um, so I'd like to ask Roby, um, who is here, I believe, to um, if there's anything that she wanted to add. And, um, and please, if anyone has any questions, do write them into the chat. Roby, if you are able to unmute yourself and um, add anything, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much, Janet, and everyone who attended in this meeting. Uh, really, what I can say using of the, this uh, mapping and technology has helped us really in the fight against FGM and gender-based violence in our communities in Serengeti. Like Janet said, especially in Serengeti districts, these digital champions are working very, very uh, hard and very, very close to report the cases of uh, these uh, GBV cases which are happening in their villages. And when they send those informations, we receive uh, to our savers, the police gender desk and the social welfare, and then we react on how we could help the survivors or help uh, the girl who is free from FGM. So for me, I say using of the technology is very, very important, especially in this time of COVID, where we are not moving here and there, but it is helping even the police uh, using maps to get into the villages easily. And which way is a good way to reach and which area is safe for them to pass through? Thank you very much. Thank you, Roby. Um, and, and if anybody has any questions, um, then please do um, 
write them in the chat. I'd also just like to um, welcome Harry, who's here, who's been doing a lot of um, training on OpenStreetMap in to various different groups in Tanzania. Um, so he's been organizing um, weekly, I think twice weekly sessions on Zoom. So if there's anybody, um, particularly in Tanzania, who wants to join those sessions, then um, I'll put the link um, in the chat. And please also feel free to ask any mapping questions there. So I'd like to pass on to uh, Courtney now. Um, so from Everywhere She Maps um, and Youth Mappers. So I'm sure Courtney will tell us a bit about Youth Mappers in a moment, but we have um, with Tanzania Development Trust and crowd to map we've also set up Youth Mapper chapters in various different um, colleges and universities in Tanzania, including in uh, Magumu that Harry has been training people at. So thank you, um, Courtney, and welcome. Yes, thank you so much, Janet. It's really a, a pleasure to be here. And um, thanks so much for letting me introduce our program. I am have been recently hired as the director of Everywhere She Maps, which is a sub program of Youth Mappers. Um, Youth Mappers is a university and college network of university students and their professors or advisors who are interested in uh, learning about OpenStreetMap and passionate about using the map and their geographic skills to uh, improve uh, and work on issues within their own communities. Um, so Youth Mappers was envisioned to fulfill the demand for open geospatial data access in all parts of our world. And really the students at our 260 plus chapters are at the center of all that we do. Um, so last year, Youth Mappers received funding to launch a new initiative called Everywhere She Maps. And this is focused specifically on empowering women who are part of the Youth Mappers Network to become even more involved through leadership trainings, um, workforce and career development programs, as well as additional trainings on geographic technology, open street map and GIS so that they are able to advance in their careers. And we're also focused on generally empowering more women to edit open street map. There is a huge gender imbalance in terms of who contributes to the map, um, as well as mapping uh, spaces that are of particular importance to women and girls, such as, for example, police stations, which was already mentioned as something that's really important to be on the map in the fight against gender-based violence. Um, so I'll, I will pop a, a link to this program in the chat if you'd like to read more about it, as well as my email. Um, like I said, I'm recently hired just getting started. And so looking for lots of partners and opportunities for collaboration. Um, and we also have a program called our regional ambassadors. And these are eight amazing women from Youth Mappers chapters all around the world who are really kind of our champions, uh, connecting with the chapters in their regions, uh, whether that be West Africa, um, East Africa, Southern Africa, Asia, and Latin America. We have ambassadors in all of those spaces. And they are really helping our chapters think through what does it mean to promote gender equity and gender equality, and how can we involve more women students in the work that we do. And I'm very excited. We actually do have a regional ambassador on this call, Raya Ahmada from Tanzania and Zanzibar, and she'll be presenting later. And um, just amazing to have her on here as well. Um, I will wrap up by saying that 
uh, several of our regional ambassadors and our chapters in different parts of the world have expressed a lot of interest in starting cam mapping campaigns and field projects related to gender-based violence. And so um, we're excited to learn and collaborate as well. Um, so feel free to reach out at any time. And um, yeah, thank you so much, Janet, for the opportunity. You're welcome and thank you for joining us. Um, Youth Mappers is a brilliant in initiative. Um, so we were going to pass straight on to um, Raya actually um, to talk about her projects in Zanzibar, but she's just um, messaged to say that she's having some internet issues. So, um, I, but she, so she's moving to somewhere else to get better connectivity. So I think it would be better to move um, to come back to her and so move to Jeffrey instead. Um, who, so Jeffrey from Humanitarian Open Street Map Uganda. Uh, are you there, Jeffrey? Uh, yes, I am, uh, James. Thank you. Um, so, uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Geoffrey uh, Kachega. I'm working with the Humanitarian Open Street Map team. Uh, so happy to uh, be here today and uh, sharing with you a little bit about uh, our work as well. Um, so, uh, at, at Humanitarian Open Street Map team, we do work with uh, uh, mapping communities, uh, so organizations and uh, local uh, communities that are interested in doing uh, open mapping. And uh, uh, of recent, we have opened up um, a regional hub uh, in Nairobi, which will be uh, directly working uh, in 22 countries in Southern uh, and Eastern Africa, uh, directly working with uh, OSM communities uh, in different projects. And one of the uh, projects that we really uh, want to support uh, projects around uh, supporting women-related issues uh, like GBV, we have worked with Broad Map and uh, hope women girls in Tanzania in the past. That's good to see uh, what uh, Janet ha has just shared. Um, we This year, we are also supporting another project uh, in Uganda uh, run by uh, an organization called the Center for Life Change Development, uh, who are also on the call. And uh, they really they were really inspired by uh, Janet's and uh, work in Tanzania. Um, so they will also be doing a project to um, use open mapping uh, to support uh, organizations in Western Uganda that are doing work around uh, uh, mitigating uh, GBV. Um, so I just want just to uh, talk about uh, opportunities like uh, around the use of maps uh, to um, try and curb instances of GBV. Um, very, in very many times, um, when, when someone is in need of help um, and in, the, in a remote place, sometimes it takes um, the police a, a long time to uh, really reach out and offer help, even not only police, but even other organizations that would be able to help. But there's really a huge opportunity when maps are put to uh, use. Um, some of you on the call have been like, who have visited like a police station. Uh, for example, in Uganda, if you visit any police station, uh, you don't see any any maps uh, on, on the walls, for example. But even in the use of maps, uh, like digital maps, because nowadays maps have really moved from uh, paper-based maps to uh, digital maps, and there's really a huge opportunity uh, when all of these uh, instances of uh, gender-based violence uh, are being reported it would be really very good to uh, visualize those on the map and see where really the hotspots are and uh, work with uh, authorities to really uh, put more focus in those areas uh, to cut down the, the, the effects. Um, there is one uh, a good project in Uganda that I'd like to give as an example, uh, which is called uh, uh, Safe Bangles. Uh, and uh, really, they, what, what they are doing, they are, they are having these bangles that uh, women can wear on their arms. But when they're in danger, they can really press that bangle. And uh, it has a GPS signal uh, that can really uh, show the location of where uh, that person is. Uh, and then using the maps to be easy for someone to really navigate to uh, the exact location and, and, and help out this person in need. 
uh, and their innovation does not even stop there. Uh, they are integrating like micro cameras and uh, audio recorders to even uh, gather evidence uh, when in kind of this danger. So it just shows like uh, what, what is really possible um, when we integrate uh, maps and other innovations uh, to really uh, tackle this uh, issue. Um, and, and the point here is that uh, we, we can really do the mapping and, uh, uh, for example, map all the police uh, locations, uh, map uh, facilities that uh, offer help to uh, women and girls. Uh, but there's need for, on top of that, to come up with other innovations that make use of this data to, uh, to respond to these, uh, to these issues. So however much we have uh, all these different groups uh, contributing to open street map and creating this open map data. Uh, there's need to go the extra step and uh, trying to uh, solve uh, these issues. Um, like what Janet was sharing, um, women in rural villages who are like digital champions using a simple app like uh, Open Data Kit to report incidences of what is happening, um, but then making this information reach timely uh, to the authorities um, and this information coming with the location component it makes it easier for the people who are, are coming back to help to know the exact location because that's that's like a huge factor uh, some people who are in need of help in very many times they're in a situation of uh, life and death and if it takes um you know authorities or someone to come and help a long long time uh, then a lot is at stake so uh, through the use of maps this time can really be reduced where a location can be easily uh, captured and uh, someone can easily reach uh, a person and, uh, and, and offer uh, help. Um, yeah, so I think I, I, I will uh, stop there, but I just wanted to uh, uh, just mention that, yeah, if you, you are doing any project um, around uh, GDV and you're interested in using maps uh, and open mapping to, um, to add that part of your work, uh, please reach out to us. Uh, I'll share my contact as well in the chat. We are happy to uh, work with you and uh, help you uh, use maps in your work to curb uh, gender-based violence. Uh, thank you. Back to you, Janet. Thank you, Jeffrey. Um, that's great. Um, so I'm hoping that Raya is able to um, speak now. Uh, Raya? And I have her slides, so um, I don't know if you want me to share them, Raya. Yes, hello. Hi. You want me to share the, share my yeah. screen? Yeah, that would be nice because I'm using a phone instead. Okay. The network is not stable here. Great. Okay, so. Can everybody see, can you see my slides now? Yes, sorry. Can you see my slides? Okay, so if you want to start. Yes, yes, I can. And tell, tell me when to move on. Okay, Raya. Uh, Raya can't hear you. Okay, um, sorry, Raya. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah, now I think okay, yeah. sorry. I was not able to unmute myself, that's why. Okay. 
It's okay. All right. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Raya Idrissa Mada. I'm an assistant lecturer at the State University of Zanzibar from the Department of Computer Science and IT. Uh, and I am also the Suiza Youth Mapper's chapter mentor, mentor, as well as the regional ambassador for the side of Tanzania, but I'm based in Zanzibar. So I would like to present a little bit on improving access to the police stations uh, in Zanzibar. And of course, this could be uh, scaled up to for, for the whole Tanzania. And then in Zanzibar, uh, uh, it has very high rates of violence against women. And this has been uh, stated by the Tanzanian Median Women's Association. And uh, whenever a woman is abused or is facing any challenges, she's expecting to report to a trust police station near her in order for the police to take action. Now, uh, so it's really important that we have the police stations mapped. And uh, currently in the open street map, there are about uh, 25 uh, police stations that are mapped uh, for the case of Unguja and only one uh, police station for the case of Pemba. Now we need to uh, actually put all of the, the information in, into the open street map so that it could help in improving the security system and the peace in Zanzibar. And this could also be used to persuade the government to improve police stations, uh, not only near the roads, because most of the police stations are located uh, near the roads, but there are some places that uh, miss uh, police stations and people have been, the communities have been uh, working for themselves, but there have been uh, some issues where they are being beaten or some, it's not safe actually. So with this data, it's uh, going to be, it's going to be easy to uh, like have a clear picture of the uh, spreading of the police stations across Zanzibar. So there's also so an initiative which started in uh, it which was which started in 20, 2009 if I'm not mistaken where they have a, a police gender help desk and and by the year 20, that uh, 400 uh, the, of, of these help desk uh, in which seven were located in Zanzibar but not everybody knows like have information to where poli which police stations that I can I can go to and it has gender based uh, help desk. So uh, uh, in 2013, uh, Inspector General of Police Said Mwema was uh, committed to improve the gender based violence and victims of child abuse. Uh, in order to encourage the survivors and victims to speak out, every police station uh, needs to be a place where they feel safe, comfortable, and supported. And from there, they, uh, they found the need of keeping those uh, gender-based help desk so that everybody knows that the police stations are safe because there were issues uh, where people were going to police stations to report the child abuse or women abuse. And it seems like uh, most women were not comfortable because, uh, you know, like the police officers there, they didn't know or they didn't have uh, proper training on the, these gender-based violence issues. But with this gender-based, uh, with this gender help desk, there are special uh, women uh, officers who are trained to deal with those cases. So it's really important, we, we find it really important for the information to be available uh, openly so that everybody knows uh, which police officer have this kind of uh, desk. Uh, So that you could see a picture from there 
that shows the police with the agenda uh, help desk. So it's really important, as I have said, to have this kind of uh, gender desk in order for the people to feel safe, like, like the, for, the, for those victims to be able to go there openly and without worrying that their information could be exposed and something like that. We need to show this information on the map and it would be very great if we have an attribute to show the availability of gender desk in a given police station. So uh, what we expect with this project is that uh, criminal activities, we, 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 we believe that criminal activities will be minimized through the establishment of new police stations and security within communities by the government so if the government sees a need of uh, putting a police station or uh, security, uh, play, security area where it is not uh, available, then this is going to uh, minimize the criminal activities, including the gender-based violence, uh, where in, which, in, in most cases happens in areas where police uh, posts are not available. And this data will be uh, freely available and can be used by government planners and other stakeholders, such as the development collaboration between the United Nations and the, the, the revolutionary government of Zanzibar, which aims at ending violence against women and children. Also, this could be used by the initiative like the Crowd to Map and the Hope for Girls, which uh, works for the, to end the gender-based violence. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Raya, that was uh, fantastic. Um, so please do, um, if people have got um, questions, please do write them in, in the chat and we'll try to get to those um, at the end. Um, next up um, was going to be Janice talking about her um, project around uh, in, in Dar es Salaam, but I think that she may have um, poor internet access. So, Anna, do you want to talk about this project um, on her behalf? Thanks, Janet. Um, I've actually got a video from Janet as a backup plan. And she has also sent me a a brief on the on the on the project, um, which I have now shared with you on the um, chat. Um, Janet, can you play the video from your end? You have good. I've just shared it with you on your email. Um, okay, I will um, attempt to do that then, and maybe you can talk about it a little bit while I get it up. Sure. So, Janet runs a, a women's right organization in one of the uh, lowest income areas of urban Dar es Salaam, Mwananyamala, and she runs a gender uh, and ge uh, knowledge center for the community, which is linked to the Tanzania Gender Networking Program, TGMP. Initially, the organization was really looking at uh, the rights of domestic workers. And those of you who are in Tanzania will recall some of those very severe cases that came up I mean, maybe 10 years ago where affluent members of society, including uh, legal professionals were found to have um, really violated the rights of their underage or often underage domestic workers. So Janet um, gave these uh, domestic workers uh, voice and legal aid uh, and linked them up with other services. But they also arranged uh, demonstrations near courthouses when these cases were being heard, because often um, these cases included um, like I said, affluent members of society. So it was a way of making these cases more visible. Following that, um, uh, she has assessed 
other issues that are affecting that Mananimala community, and notably one of them is the vulnerability of girls and women in public transport. And this initiative has been now implemented in three districts, and Janet is welcoming collaboration of other stakeholders to take this nationwide, and she's working very closely with district authorities and, and others. So I think Janet has the video. Um, Janet uh, Mawinza uh, also is the recipient of one of the 16 Days of Activism Awards uh, last year for her work on ending gender-based violence. She was voted among uh, 1,500 um, or 1,500 people voted for the champions in Tanzania and she was one among 16. So she's highly respected and highly effective and, and somebody I truly admire and, uh, and I hope you are hearing this, Janet. Um, and here is her video. Um, Janet uh, Mawinza, if you are able to also say something after the video, that would be great. Over to you, Janet Chapman. <laughs> okay, thank you. And just to say on the 16, uh, the 16 champions, um, Roby Samueli was also one of them, which is fantastic to have two of them here um, on the call. Okay. Fantastic. Um, I hope everybody got that. If not, um, I think you can read it in the chat. Um, so, Janeth, did you want to say anything um, more? Um, I'm, I'm not sure she's, I think she might have dropped off the call. Um, Anna, did you want to add anything? You're muted. Okay, now, um, no, just to say that um, I think sometimes in these international fora, it's challenging to bring uh, forth the cases that are really in the communities. And I think Janet's intervention is one of those that's really having an impact in the lives of, 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 of people in, in very hard to reach areas. And, um, and I think uh, this was an attempt to sort of 
marry two, two worlds which are often very separate technological innovations and very community-based um, solutions. And, um, and, uh, and that's the sort of um, thinking we had behind it. We were hoping to have had subtitles for the video by the time that this meeting was conducted. Unfortunately, we didn't uh, make it. Janet, before I, I say my last words, is there something else that you want to um, say? No, I don't think so. Um, so I will put um, my contact details in, in the chat. So if anybody um, wants to get involved um, in helping map Tanzania, then or wants to find out any more, that would be fantastic. Um, I saw that there was some question um, uh, around the police um, percentage and so on. I was really hoping that Sijali would be able to, would have joined and could have answered that question. Um, I don't know if anybody um, else wants to make any short comments um, before we close. Um, otherwise, um, thank you everybody for attending. Just to add to that, that I think the thinking that we have had in these sessions is to bring together like I see Mary Kessie is here from WHO, who's been really spearheading um, the most recent revisions to the medical management of GPV guidelines for the Ministry of Health. Then we had, on the other hand, people like Janet, who are working in the in the low-income areas of Dar es Salaam, in, in uh, Serengeti and Butiama, working with very hard-to-reach areas there. And then we have the international community, which has been... Uh, instrumental in getting volunteers to to map really hard to reach places and and just to say that our thinking is that if we work together as one we can really uh, make huge strides in this and um, as film we are um, embarking on the development of an application which will hopefully um, support the national child helpline to have um, a, a more diverse sort of service palette working with two um, Finnish companies um, and a number of Tanzanian partners uh, as well. Um, but hopefully uh, we'll be uh, able to invite you to more sessions like this um, and any thoughts on how we can stay in touch and and if you are very keen to become a part of all of these um, processes that we are working with, um, please uh, throw your email into the chat box. Um, thank you everyone for your time. We are... Um, ahead of time which is great um but i think maybe janet if there's any questions like there is maybe we can open the floor shortly or what do you say yes absolutely and i think um kabali um is has raised his hand and he is um the person behind safe bangle so kabali if you would like to um the floor is yours if you'd like to unmute yourself and if there's yes, anybody else i just did so to, unmute yourself please um, raise your hand okay thank you janet uh i want to give thumbs up to my colleague who had talked about self bango earlier i just sent in a quick 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 email to you so if it's okay i can go ahead and elaborate more about what our work but yeah thank you so much for bringing this event together and it's very good to know that we are not alone working beside the other people who are working thank you so much Fantastic. Thanks. You're very welcome. And um, if uh, I can um, send the um, presentation that you that you've just sent me by email uh, around to everybody with the recording, if that's OK. OK, if anybody else wants to unmute themselves, please raise your hand. Um, Janet is just joining again, so I don't know if she wants to say anything. Or if Harry, if you want to say anything about the mapping training that you've been doing, please do so.
Okay, well, in that case, um, I suggest that we wrap it up there and I will send you, um, I will send everybody the recording and the slides and um, we will also keep you informed about future events if, if you're interested. So thank you very much. I'll stop the recording there.